Okay, so the Hungarian algorithm for weighted assignments. So imagine you had four employees. Okay, W, X, Y, and Z. And let's say you had four different jobs to do. Okay, and those jobs were A, B, C, and D. So maybe you've got, uh, maybe you're like a construction crew, right? And you've got four people working in the construction crew and you need to do some brick laying and you need someone to do like the mixing of the cement and you need someone to level something off and you need some other job done. Okay. Now, all of your employees are capable of doing all of these jobs. So W, say Wendy, is capable of doing all of those jobs and X is capable of doing all of those jobs and Y is capable of doing all of those jobs and Z is capable of doing all, oops, all of those jobs. How do you assign them? Well, what about if W, say, um, only took 10 minutes to do job A, uh, but X took 15 minutes to do job A, um, and Y took uh, 17 minutes to do job A, and Z took eight minutes to do job A? Well, maybe it would make sense to get Z to do job A, but maybe Z's great at all the jobs. Maybe Z uh, only takes five minutes to do job D, and W takes uh, six minutes to do job D, and maybe it would be better to get W to do D and Z to do A, but maybe it would be better to get them to do the other way. You can see that uh, I'm creating a weighted bipartite graph and you can see that there's going to be like four, 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 four. There's going to be like 16 different numbers here. And I'm going to have to come up with a way to come up with the most efficient way to use my crew and assign them to these jobs. Now, first of all, the graph is a mess. It's going to be way, way easier to put all of this information into a table. So here's a table, employees uh, and jobs along here. So. Wendy takes 30 minutes to do job A. Um, Zen, Zenon takes 30 minutes to do job B. Um, Yolanda takes 60 minutes to do job C, and so on. All right, now we're gonna use the Hungarian algorithm to assign our employees. Now what's an algorithm? It's just a series of steps. So as long as you follow this series of steps, you can't go too far wrong. So first step, so first step, subtract the lowest value in each row from every element in the row. Okay, so a row is across, right? That's row one, row two, row three, row four. Let's look at row one. The lowest value is 30. All right, so I'm gonna take every element in that row and subtract 30 from it. So 30 minus 30 is zero. 40 minus 30 is 10. 50 minus 30 is 20, and 60 minus 30 is 30. From here, we just do it for the other rows as well. So the lowest value here is 30. So now we subtract 30 from all of the things in that row. So 70 minus 30 is 40, 30 minus 30 is 0, 40 minus 30 is 10, and 70 minus 30 is 40. All right, uh, this row, 60, 50, 60, 30, our lowest one is here. So 60 minus 30 is 30, 50 minus 30 is 20, 60 minus 30 is 30, and 30 minus 30 is 0. And the lowest value here is 20, so 20 minus 20 is 0, 80 minus 20 is 60, 50 minus 20 is 30, and 70 minus 20 is 50. Okay, that's step one. Uh, what that's given us is a 0 in every single one of the rows. All right, so now you do a little bit of drawing, right? You can draw a horizontal or a vertical line through the zeros, and your goal is to um, draw lines through the zeros, uh, covering them all up with the minimum amount you can. All right, so uh, you can see that there's two zeros here in a line, so I'm going to cover them up, right, with one line. Uh, now, I can uh, cover that zero up with this line like this, and I can cover that zero up by just drawing a line like that, or by drawing a line like that. It doesn't matter. Okay, that is the minimum amount of lines that I can do 
draw to cover up the zeros. How many lines did I draw? One, two, three. Hmm. Okay, that's a problem because if I could, if the minimum amount required was four lines, then my job would be finished. But because the minimum amount is three, which is less than the number of um, assignments I need to make, because I need to make four assignments, then I have to keep going. All right, so on to step two. Okay, step two. Uh, last time we did the rows, we looked at all the rows and subtracted the lowest amount in that row. Step two is all about columns. If a column doesn't contain a zero, subtract the lowest value from every element in the column. Okay, so let's look at column one. First of all, if a column doesn't contain a zero. Well, column one contains a zero, so we can leave it exactly how it is. Zero, 40, uh, 30, and zero. Column B, 10, 0. Oh, it does contain a 0, so I can leave it exactly how it was. 10, 0, 20, uh, 60. What about column C? Oh, column C does not contain a 0. So I find the lowest value, 20, 10, 30, 30, that's 10, and I subtract it from all of the values in that column. So 20 minus 10 is 10, 10 minus 10 is 0, 30 minus 10 is 20, and 30 minus 10 is 20. And finally, the last one contains a zero, so it can stay exactly as it is. All right, so from here, we want to cover up all of the zeros with the minimum number of lines possible. All right, let's see. I see two zeros there, and I see two zeros there. Right, so I can cover up those two zeros like that. I can cover up those two zeros like that, and I can cover up that zero with a line like that or a line like that. Okay, uh, three lines. Oh, all right. Um, because it's only taken three lines and I want to do four assignments, I'm still not finished. I need to do more work. On to step three. All right, step three is complicated. Add the smallest uncovered value to elements that are covered by two lines. Subtract it from all uncovered elements. All right, so look at where you drew your lines. I drew three lines, one, two, and three. Add the smallest uncovered value. So where are our uncovered values, or values that aren't covered by a line? Here, 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 and here. Okay, the smallest uncovered value is 10. And now it says, um, add the smallest uncovered value to elements that are covered by two lines. Uh, this element is covered by two lines. It's 40, uh, so I need to add 10 to it to make 50. This element is covered by two lines. It's also 40, so I need to add 10 to it to make 50. Um, now, these elements are only covered by one line, and they're the zeros. So I can put uh, well, actually, some of them are not zeros. I can write them in because I don't have to do anything with the ones that are covered. So 0, 0, 0, 30, 0, uh, 50, 0, and 30. Okay, and finally we come to the subtraction bit. Subtract it, that being the lowest value that was uncovered, from all uncovered elements. So. 10 minus 10 is 0, 10 minus 10 is 0, 20 minus 10 is 10, 20 minus 10 is 10, 60 minus 10 is 50, and 20 minus 10 is 10. Okay, I really hope we're at the end here. Let's try to cover up all of the zeros with our minimum number of lines. All right, there's three zeros here all in a line. So. I should try to cover them up. There are two zeros there all in a line. I should try to cover them up. Two more zeros. Okay, it looks like I can't cover them with one line. I'm going to have to cover them with two lines, either downwards or crosswards. It doesn't matter which way. Cover them like that. And 
I feel very confident that that is the minimum number of lines I could have used to cover those zeros. How many lines did I use? Four. How many assignments do I need to make? Four. That means that I am finished. I just have to do the assignments now. Now, before I go on, I should say that um, if there were only three lines, if you got to this step and you got stuck and you went, wait a minute, I'm still only using three lines, then just keep repeating step three, okay? Repeat as necessary. So you might need to do step three a couple of times if uh, you only get three lines. You have to keep adding the smallest uncovered value to those that are covered by two lines. Okay, but I'm lucky here. I don't have to keep repeating step three. So rows, columns, this weird double line uncovered thing, and then keep repeating step three until you're done. Let's do the assignment. So as I'm doing my assignment, I'm going to talk to you about Wendy and X and Y and Z, whatever their names are, right? Uh, Wendy's a gun. Wendy um, is great at job A, great at job B, and great at job C. She'd be a great choice for all three of those. Uh, X is great at job B and great at job C. That'd be a great choice for both. Yolanda is only really good at doing job D, so we should only really consider her for job D. And Z, Zelda, is only good for doing job A, all right? So we start filling in our less useful employees first. So Y is great at D, so let's put Y with D. Z is great at A, so let's put Z with A. Okay, now uh, our next most, our next most not as awesome employee is X. So uh, they can do B or C. Now, uh, B and C, actually, it doesn't matter because uh, B and C are both there. So I can choose to put X with B or C because Wendy can also do B or C. So they can play like rock, scissors, and paper to decide who does B and who does C. I'm just going to choose X to do C and Wendy to do B. That's a pretty good assignment. Now we can figure out how many, say, minutes this job's going to take, right? Uh, Wendy is going to be doing job B, and it's going to take her 40 minutes to do that job. Uh, X is going to be doing job C, and it's going to take him 40 minutes. Um, y is going to be doing job D, and it's going to take 30 minutes. And Z is going to be doing job A, and it's going to take them 20 minutes. Uh, and that's going to be uh, 80 plus 30, 110, 130. Now, just to show you what I meant about, it doesn't really matter uh, what we'd done with um, W and X. If W had done C, it would have uh, taken them 50 minutes. W, C, 50 minutes. And if X had done B, it would have taken them 30 minutes. So we'd be replacing 40 and 40 with 50 and 30 which would still lead to the same amount of minutes, 130. Now, obviously, if they're all doing it at the same time, it's not going to take 130 total minutes. It's going to take the, whatever the longest amount of time is, which is 40 in this case. Okay, that is the Hungarian algorithm for weighted assignments.